I wonder whether you spend any time thinking about copper. No, not just about the element, but about the impact that copper has had on human beings over a period of several thousand years. Copper is one of the most important elements. It was certainly known to the ancients. And it is the one which has driven technological change again and again through the ages. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about this element. Now, if you take a look at some copper, it does have that fantastic, beautiful, kind of orangey color, doesn't it? But I'd like you to look again, because if you actually polish copper carefully, and here we have a pan which has been polished quite well, you can actually see that it's got a rather pinkish sheen to it. And if you leave it around or if you heat it up a bit, then what it does is it darkens. It darkens as it gets coated with a layer of oxide. Now, where do we get our copper from? Well, copper is actually mined throughout Central Africa, other places of the world, but certainly Zambia was famous for its copper mines. And I'm going to pour a little bit of copper, of a copper ore, into this beaker. This is malachite. In fact, it's synthetic malachite rather than the sort of real crude ore. Um, but this is a copper hydroxycarbonate. And you can see that it's got that, that really glorious kind of greenish color, which has made it so valuable as a pigment in Renaissance art. But copper, of course, when we go to school, we all get to play with this amazing stuff, copper carbonate. And this is the remains of some crystals that I grew with an architect friend, Magnus Larsen, uh, a year and a half ago, where we attempted to build them into these plastic frames. And you can see this glorious deep blue and the wonderful sort of crystal faces on the copper sulfate. Copper itself is relatively inert. If you actually leave it around in air, very, very slowly it will pick up oxygen. And you can see that it tarnishes gently. It actually goes a rather dull brownish color. And it's this very inertness which is the reason why copper has so often been used to clad roofs, drain pipes. In Italy, all drain pipes, astonishingly, are actually made of copper. And it's wonderful to see the brand new ones, beautifully glinty and shiny, and then they slowly age. And eventually what they develop are these patches of what is called verdigris. And that is, of course, what happens as the copper picks up water and carbon dioxide from the air and gradually begins to give rise to that lovely green color. But given the right sorts of reagents, you can actually get copper to react very nicely indeed. And I'm holding in my hand a beaker of aquafortis, as it was known to the alchemists, strong water, also known as nitric acid. What you got if you essentially distilled iron or copper salts with saltpeter and water. And I'm going to dip it in, and I want you to watch what happens. Immediately, the surface of the copper leaps to life. You can see those brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide. And instantly, the solution turns green. And that's copper nitrate, which is being formed. At the same time, the surface of the copper is cleaned off as the copper oxide on the surface dissolves. And here, we really see sort of magical, beautiful chemistry, the kinds of chemistry that would have fascinated the alchemists of old. <laughs>